Credit and Risk Management We all know credit risk is most simply defined as the potential that a bank borrower or counterpart will fail to meet its obligations in accordance with agreed terms. The aim of credit risk management is to maximize a bank's risk-adjusted rate of return by maintaining credit risk exposure within the acceptable parameters. Banks need to manage the credit risk inherent in the entire portfolio as well as the risk in individual credits or transactions. In this lesson, we will discuss the types of risk faced by banks, explain the impact of retail banking on banks' risk profile, identify the indicators of risk, paraphrase the elements of risk measurement and explain the system of management of risk in banks. After going through this presentation, you should be able to discuss the types of risk faced by banks. State the impact of retail banking on banks' risk profile. Explain the indicators of risk and risk measurement. Describe the management of risk in banks. Discuss the risk involved in various segments of retail loans. Explain operational risk management and disaster recovery management. Balancing of risk and return poses a major challenge before them. The successful banks are those who take reasonable risk after carefully examining all the relevant factors, including the expected return from the project under consideration before approval. Banks in the course of their business are faced with different types of financial and non-financial risk. Credit risk is generally made up of transaction risk or default risk and portfolio risk. Transaction risk arises from individual credit transactions of the bank at a micro level. Operational risk is the risk of loss arising from human or technical error, fraud or business performance failure. Market risk is arising from adverse changes in market variables such as interest rates, exchange rates, equity prices, commodity prices, etc. These get manifested in the form of liquidity risk, interest rate risk, forex risk, commodity price risk, equity price risk, etc. A highly volatile interest rate environment may lead to deterioration in credit quality and finally result in default risk by borrowers. Similarly, a mismatch between assets and liabilities may lead to liquidity risk and eventually to operational risk. The financial markets all over the globe have suffered a serious impact from the financial crisis and economic recession from time to time. Only a few banks have escaped safe and sound as the retail banking industry continues to adjust to downfalls and upswings in the global financial and economic environment. Each bank determines the categories of loans that it intends to promote and the type of exposure, the economic sector, the form of property, the counterparty category, the residence, the geographic area, the currency, the initial period and the estimated profitability in its assumed credit risk profile. In order to protect its stakeholders and client interest, a retail bank assumes a cautious credit risk profile correlated to the objectives established in its business strategy. Retail banks approach credit very conservatively, lending only to financially strong, well-established borrowers. Growth-oriented banks may approach lending more aggressively, lending to borrowers who pose a higher repayment risk. Hence, retail banks have better idea about the customers and have less risk in lending them. Risk indicators are statistics and or metrics which can provide insight into a bank's risk position. These are developed on the basis of correlations that are expected or that have been determined with casual factor analysis. They provide timely insights on present and future risk situations. Key risk indicators are an important component of an early warning system for monitoring and controlling operational risk. 
After assessment of key risk indicators, these will be prioritized through ABC analysis for identifying the operational risk to be controlled or shared or transferred or avoided or diversified. Banks will identify the KRIs once the operational risk management framework is put in place. Prudential limit in respect of each KRI is set to monitor operational risk after building up loss of data for minimum of three years. To the maximum possible extent, institutions should establish systems or models that quantify their risk profile. However, in some risk categories such as operational risk, quantification is quite difficult and complex. Any risk measurement framework, especially those which employ quantitative techniques or model, is only as good as its underlying assumptions, the rigor and robustness of its analytical methodologies, the control surrounding data inputs and its appropriate application. An effective measurement and monitoring system is essential for adequate management of liquidity risk. An effective liquidity risk measurement and monitoring system not only helps in managing liquidity in times of crisis, but also optimizes return through efficient utilization of available funds. Risk management comprises of identification, measurement, monitoring and controlling risk to ensure that the individuals who take or manage risk clearly understand it. Risk management is a discipline at the core of every financial institution and encompasses all the activities that affect its risk profile. It comprises identification, measurement, monitoring and controlling risk to ensure that the individuals who take or manage risk clearly understand it. The bank's risk exposure is within the limits established by bank's risk management committee and risk taking decisions are in line with the business strategy and objectives set by the risk management committee. A risk management framework encompasses the scope of risk to be managed, the process or systems and procedures to manage risk, and the roles and responsibilities of individuals involved in risk management. The framework should be comprehensive enough to capture all risk a bank is exposed to and have flexibility to accommodate any change in business activities. The framework should have a mechanism to guarantee an ongoing review of systems, policies and procedures for risk management and procedure to adopt changes. The expected payoffs compensate for the risk taken. Risk taking decisions are explicit and clear. Sufficient capital as a buffer is available to take risk. There are number of risks associated with banks' retail loans, both for the bank and for those who receive the loans. Risk in bank loans can include credit risk, the risk that the loan won't be paid back on time or at all, interest rate risk, the risk that the interest rates priced on bank loans will be too low to earn the bank enough money. Liquidity risk, the risk that too many deposits will be withdrawn too quickly, leaving the bank short on immediate cash. First banking risk, when a bank makes a loan, it is taking a risk that the borrower will pay the loan back, credit risk, and also taking the risk that the funds loaned out won't be needed to pay out withdrawals or to take care of regular bank business, thereby preventing bank runs liquidity risk. Next is depositors risk. Depositors to banks have their own sets of risk. Most considerably the depositor is worried about credit risk. If the bank fails the depositor wonders if he will be able to get back the money he has deposited. Borrowers risk means that the borrower has risk. Risk that the return on the investment will be too low and the cost of the loan too high. Making his endeavors a financial failure. The point of taking on risk in the first place is to get a chance for a greater return and when banks advances loans they are undertaking several types of risk in the hope of making a return.
Growing number of high-profile operational loss events worldwide have led banks and supervisors to increasingly view operational risk management as an inclusive discipline. Management of specific operational risk is not a new practice. It has always been important for banks to try to prevent fraud, maintain integrity of internal controls and reduce errors in transaction processing. Operational risk is intrinsic to a bank. It should be a significant component of its enterprise-wide risk management systems. The broad and senior management should create an enabling organizational culture, placing high priority on the effective operation, risk management and adherence to sound operating procedures. Successful implementation of risk management process has to emanate from the top management with the demonstration of a strong commitment to integrate the same into the basic operation and strategic decision-making processes. It is recognized that the exact approach for operational risk management chosen by an individual bank will depend on a range of factors, including size and sophistication and nature and complexity of its activities. A Disaster Recovery Plan DRP, describes how an organization is to deal with potential disasters. Just as a disaster is an event that makes the continuation of normal functions impossible, a disaster recovery plan consists of the precautions taken so that the effects of a disaster will be minimized and the organization will be able to either maintain or quickly resume mission-critical functions. Typically, disaster recovery planning involves an analysis of business processes and continuity needs. It may also include a significant focus on disaster prevention. Disaster recovery is becoming an increasingly important aspect of enterprise computing. Disaster recovery planning may be developed within an organization or purchased as a software application or a service. Interruption of services or loss of data can have serious financial impact whether directly or through loss of customer confidence, so a proper disaster recovery mechanism. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. Risk indicators are statistics and or metrics which can provide insight into a bank's risk position. Right or wrong? Right. An effective measurement and monitoring system is essential for adequate management of credit risk. Right or wrong? Wrong. Operational risk is defined as the risk of loss resulting from any type of inadequate or failed internal processes, people and systems or from external events. Right or wrong? Right. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. Balancing of risk and returns poses a major challenge before them. The successful banks are those who take reasonable risk after carefully examining all the relevant factors, including the expected return from the project under consideration before approval. Operational risk is the risk of loss arising from human or technical error fraud or business performance failure. Risk indicators are statistics and or metrics which can provide insight into a bank's risk position. Each bank determines the categories of loans that it intends to promote, the type of exposure, the economic sector, the form of property, the counterparty category, the residence, the geographic area, the currency, the initial period and the estimated profitability in its assumed credit risk profile. Credit risk is the probability of loss from a debtor's default. In banking, credit risk is a major factor in determination of interest rate on a loan. Longer the term of loan, usually higher the interest rate. When a bank gives money to a borrower and the borrower agrees to return the property or repay the borrowed money, along with interest at a predetermined date in the future. A plan for duplicating computer operations after a catastrophe occurs, such as a fire or earthquake. 
It includes routine off-site backup as well as a procedure for activating vital information systems in a new location.